Hi, this is Lance with tips for realestatephotography.com. Today we're going to take a look at editing a twilight photo. Let's go ahead and open up Lightroom and take a look at the bracketed shots that I did for this particular property. What I did to take these photos is I took them at about 15 minutes after the sunset time. You'll notice if you go to Weather Channel or wunderground.com, you'll notice that in your area it states a time of sunset. I usually shoot for about 15 minutes after that time. That seems to get me the best results. You want to make sure that the property you're shooting, if they have solar screens on, that they take them off or at least let the agent know that because the solar screens are on there, we're not going to be able to see too much inside the property. And you want to make sure all the interior lights are on and the exterior landscape lights for the best effect. I'm shooting this on a tripod because we're shooting multiple frames, so we want to make sure our camera's in the same spot. And I'm shooting at f7.1 at 320 ISO. The way I do this is I actually start to chimp with my promote control. So I start with a faster shutter that gives me a dark exposure like the one we see right now on the screen. And I increase the stop up until I get to where I have a white sky. Basically what I'm doing is I'm grabbing exposures for the interior, I'm grabbing an exposure for the exterior, and I'm grabbing an exposure for the sky when it's white so we can easily replace it later with a twilight sky of our choice. You'll see here this is our final shot, our white sky shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go and find my three exposures that I want to pull into Photoshop. So let's take a look at this shot right here. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the windows, the interior. I want to pick a shot that I can kind of see inside, but I don't want it to be too dark either. This one seems to be too dark to me. I want it a little bit brighter. And let's go up one more. This one seems a little bit too bright. It's too blown out for my taste. So I'm going to select this particular photo for the interior shot for the window view. One stop up looks like to be a good shot for the exterior. I'm just looking at the exterior of the property. That looks like a good exposure to use, so I'm going to blend that in. And then our last shot is the white sky shot. So I'm going to select all three of these shots. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. What that's going to do is it's going to actually open up all three frames in Photoshop as a single image. It's going to put each frame as its own layer, which is going to be perfect for us to blend them together. All right, after they're all opened up in a single frame, we are going to actually arrange them so our brightest exposure is the top frame. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that one up, and I'm going to drag the middle one up to the middle. So now we have bright, and then we have the medium one, and then we have our darkest one. Now remember, our darkest frame is going to be for the windows. Our medium frame is going to be for the exterior of the property. And our brightest frame is going to be for our sky. We want that sky to be white because we're going to actually select it in order to remove it. So let's go ahead and hide the top layer. And we are going to bring in a sky. I already have one open here in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and select everything and hit copy. And I'm going to paste it here in between my darkest exposure and my medium exposure. Now I'm going to take my darkest exposure and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm actually going to drag it above my sky. That's our windows. Here we can see our darkest exposure where our windows are at and here's our medium exposure where we want to have only the property be visible here, uh, not the actual window exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mask this by clicking on the layer mask button. And by default, it's going to comp as white. So make sure you're selecting that you have the mask selected. Select your entire image. And you want to fill that with black. You can use a shortcut key for that. Command delete on a Mac. After you deselect everything, go ahead and go to your paintbrush tool. Select something kind of decent. 
in terms of size. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna paint, make sure you have white as your primary color, and we're gonna paint white on top of our masked layer. We'll see that this is going to actually bring back our property. Now we don't want to actually color or paint in side of the windows. We wanna leave those as is. So we're just painting around the actual exterior of the property. We're leaving the windows as is. Now when we get over here, we can see we have a lot of trees. So I'm actually just going to increase my brush size and paint them all in. We can paint in some of the actual tree leaves to make them brighter. I'm gonna do the, all the outside or the exterior landscaping as well. Bring in some of this tree over here. Now if we hide this layer that we're editing, we can see that here's our window exposure and then when we pull this back in, we can see the actual property that we brought in. Now, there's a little bit of excess painted in over here, so I'm actually going to paint over that by swapping to black and just covering this up just a little bit. All right, once we're happy with how we have it masked in, I'm gonna actually raise the exposure just a little bit. It's a little bit too dark for me. Go to image adjustments. And exposure. And I'm gonna bump it up just until I see fit with my eyes. About 0.7 and hit okay. And again, this is just to bump up the exterior of the actual property itself. I'm not touching any of the windows at this particular time. I'm gonna right click on our top layer that we just masked and I'm gonna click merge down. So now both of those layers are merged together. So if we hide it, we can see our sky is sitting in our background. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually delete the sky out of this particular frame so we can see our new twilight sky. In order to do that, I want the sky to be white. I want it to be a uniform color when I select it. So I'm going to click on our top layer and make it visible where we have our white sky and I'm going to select color range. You can click inside of your sky, your white sky to select that particular color of the image. Down here under selection preview, I have quick mask selected. That's why you see all the red everywhere. This is easily and quickly tells you what you have selected for your color. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna go to select, modify, expand. I'm gonna set it to three pixels and hit okay. I'm gonna go to select modify feather and select a feather radius of two pixels and hit okay. What that's gonna do is it expanded our selection by three pixels and then it feathered it by two pixels to help soften it up a bit. So when we erase our sky, it's going to pull in our twilight more naturally around the leaves of all the trees. So we're done with this top layer. So if you want, you can delete it or simply hide it Make sure you click back down on your uh, second layer here because this is a layer of the sky that we want to delete. Click on your eraser tool, select a big brush, a big size brush, and change the opacity to about 30%. What you're gonna do is you're gonna actually just paint over this sky and you're gonna do it multiple times. You're only erasing 30% at a time. The reason we do that is so, just so it's not as harsh and so it's easier to control. And I'm just gonna make a couple of waves back and forth across this image. And you'll notice that I started close to the house, but I am now moving up and only erasing the top part of the image to make it darker. It's giving it kind of a gradient feel. 
After you're done, you can deselect your selection. And you'll notice around some of the trees, it, it doesn't look very good. It didn't blend very well. If you wanted, you could go back to the beginning and you could change that expand, that selection expanding to four pixels instead of three. That could help in this situation. But instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to layer one, which is my sky, my twilight sky. And I'm gonna lower the opacity down to help remove some of those issues that we have around the trees or around the leaves. Then I'm going to go up to image adjust hue and saturation and I'm going to bump up saturation until it looks too bad and then I'm going to bump up lightness to help bring it back a little bit. I'm going to hit OK and I am going to zoom out here and I'm going to my sky is currently too big. You can see here the selection of my sky, of how big that sky image is. So I'm actually gonna shrink it down to the actual size of my image. And then I'm simply gonna raise it up so we can see some of that pink in the background. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna right click on my layers and I'm gonna go to flatten image, discard hidden layers, sure, we don't need them. I'm gonna X out and I'm gonna save it. This will take it back into Lightroom for me. We can see our image here in Lightroom. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the verticals. I shot this on a tripod and I pointed up, so I need to adjust the verticals to make sure we are looking straight up and down. That looks about good. I'm gonna adjust the framing of this to crop it. And I might rotate it just a little bit. Again, just if I notice something looks a little messed up from the verticals. And now I'm just gonna make some final adjustments. I might lower my highlights just a little bit and I'm going to bump up the shadows to try to get some more brightness in those dark spots. And I'm going to boost up my contrast. And if you want, you could even take a brush and take either shadows or exposure, do something light. And you could color in a little bit to make it a little bit brighter in places where you think it might be a little bit too dark. Maybe go up to four. All right, that looks pretty good. So that's a twilight shot that I would deliver to a client. Obviously take the tips that I showed and come up with your own process of developing your own twilight and your own style. But I hope this helps you get on your way to hopefully add a new product to your real estate agents. Make sure you visit tips for realestatephotography.com for more tutorials just like this that help real estate photographers run a successful real estate photography business.